all you wonderful people. You all are probably a little surprised I have another video coming out this quickly, but a bunch of stuff came up and I felt the need to address it, uh, particularly as it pertains to some responses I got on my previous video and some apologies that I have to make uh, for some boo-boos that I made. Uh, but before I get into all that... Um, uh, one thing I did want to address is uh, I, I do want to send my best wishes and all my thoughts and prayers to uh, both Brett the Hitman Hart and to Blackjack Mulligan. Uh, Blackjack Mulligan was hospitalized right before Monday Night Raw. Uh, it's the reason that Bray Wyatt and Bo Dallas were not on the show. Uh, it's uh, obviously a family thing. I don't know exactly what happened to Blackjack or what uh, what caused the need for him to be hospitalized. Uh, put into the hospital? Um, I, I don't know exactly. I know he hasn't been in great health over the last few years, but um, hopefully we get good news going forward. I haven't heard anything, so I don't really know, but um, obviously I wish him and his family all the best uh, over what I'm sure is a very difficult time. It's never, it's never an easy thing to deal with, unfortunately. Um, and obviously I want to extend that same, uh, those same well wishes to Brett the Hitman Hart and his family and friends. Uh, Bret Hart came out on Monday and announced that he is battling prostate cancer and will be having surgery later this week uh, to uh, combat it. And, um, you know, that's that's going to be a tough fight for Bret. Cancer is never an easy thing to deal with, and it's uh, uh, always very hard on the patient and uh, the patient's friends and family. So it's it's a very tough thing to deal with. And um, it's very hard to see it happen to somebody like Bret because Bret was always one of my favorites as a kid. I, I loved Bret the Hitman Hart as a kid. He was one of my favorite wrestlers, and especially, I, I mean, I got into wrestling through the Hogan era with all these over-the-top cartoon characters and uh, colorful characters and all these, you know, big, larger-than-life icons, so to see a guy like Bret Hart who, um, you know, was very grounded, at least compared to other wrestlers, and was more realistic in his approach, um, he was actually a breath of fresh air for me. It was like, oh, this is something different. I like this. And I, I was always a huge fan of Brett's work as a result. And um, he was one of the reasons I kept watching the WWF in the mid-90s when uh, everything got as bad as it did. It's like, well, you still got Brett. And it's like, oh, I mean, there were a handful of guys. It was Brett, Sean, Razor Ramon, The Undertaker. Uh, eventually they got uh, Mick Foley um, with the Mankind gimmick. Uh, Gold Dust came in uh, in late 95. Um, but overall, um, you know, Bret Hart's body of work is, is one that I always appreciated. So I've always been a fan of his. So to see him going through something like this is very hard for me, uh, personally. And, uh, again, I wish him all the best and I hope everything, uh, turns out okay for him. But, you know, this isn't going to be an easy fight either way. So, um, here's wishing all the best to the hitman and hopefully everything turns out okay. But, um, yeah, moving past the sad stuff, um... Another thing I wanted to talk about were uh, some mistakes that I made in my last video that I got called out on uh, in the comment section. I feel the need to uh, apologize for. One of them was that I said in the last video that the main event to last week's Raw was a 4-on-2 handicap match, Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose taking on the League of Nations with Reigns and Ambrose going over. I'm not entirely sure why I thought it was a 4-on-2 handicap match. I It tells you how closely I was paying attention to, to Raw this week. Uh, or last week, anyway. Um, yeah, I, I don't know why I thought it was a 4-on-2 handicap match. I just kind of just did. I I don't know what happened in my brain there, but I, I don't know if I misremembered it or I just don't know if I just was so disinterested that I was only half paying attention. I, I don't know. But whatever it was, I made a mistake. People called me out on it, and rightfully so. I, I fucked up. Uh, that was a bad call on my part. Uh, the other one is that I said Big Show turned face on SmackDown, and apparently Big Show has been a face for the last few weeks now. Um, which, uh, you know, I'll defend that one on my... <laughs> I'll defend making that mistake because because it's Big Show, he could have easily turned face a month ago, turned heel in between, and turned face again on SmackDown last week. So, I mean, with Big Show, you never fucking know. I, I remember uh, people making fun of Lex Luger for his constant heel face turns. And, uh, yeah, and I was like, man, fucking... Fucking Luger is almost normal compared to Big Show nowadays. It's just fucking ridiculous how often he turns. But uh, whatever the case, uh, I may have gotten the date wrong, but he is a face again to the excitement of absolutely no one. Um, but yeah, I did make that mistake, and I felt the need to correct it here, and it will never happen again. Now let me talk to you about this episode of Raw where Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns defeated the New Day in a three-on-two handicap match in Raw's main event. <laughs> I kid. I kid. Obviously. Um, but yeah. Uh, 
uh, yeah, so I wanted to make up for those mistakes. Sorry about that. I'll try better in the future to not make those mistakes again. Uh, another thing that was brought up in the last video, people wanted to know what were my thoughts on what Jim Cornette had to say about Lucha Underground. Um, I, I, I didn't talk about it in the last video because I didn't think anybody would care. I think... Because if you look at what Jim Cornette said, he didn't say anything that shocked me at all. It's like everything, literally every word of what he said. I'm like, yeah, that that's how Jim Cornette would feel. Uh, I mean, Lucha Underground is clearly not his cup of tea. Uh, Lucha Underground is not the cup of tea for every wrestling fan on the planet. Um, you know, some people have said the exact same things that Jim Cornette did about uh, why he doesn't like Lucha Underground. So um, I wasn't surprised at all by what... Uh, Jim Cornette had to say, and on the flip side of that, I also wasn't surprised that uh, Vince Russo came out and said that Lucha Underground is the best wrestling show on TV. <laughs> I'm like, that doesn't surprise me at all. Lucha Underground's right up Russo's alley. If you put fucking, if Russo knew what he was doing and didn't have ideas that were completely inane, Lucha Underground is probably the wrestling show he would make, uh, or would certainly love to be a part of. Um, but no, don't let Russo anywhere near Lucha Underground, please. I, I like it the way it is. We don't don't need to ruin it. But um, and again, it goes back to my other points. Like you know, if they didn't hate each other so fucking much, if you put Cornette and Russo together, they'd probably and they were willing to get along and cooperate, they could probably be a pretty good booking team. But the problem is that Jim Cornette's an angry, crazy person, and we all love him because he's an angry, crazy person. But he is an angry, crazy person, and Vince Russo doesn't know how to handle criticism and doesn't like to handle criticism. And uh, you know, um, that doesn't make for a good mix. But, you know, if they actually took uh, Vince Russo's flair and Jim Cornette's, like, old-school logic and put them together, they could probably make a really good wrestling show. But, you know, whatever. Um, never going to happen. But, um, yeah, what were my thoughts on what Jim Cornette said? I mean, obviously I disagreed with him, but it's uh, it's a matter of opinion. I'll sit here and talk about till the cows come home about how much I love Lucha Underground and how I think it's the best wrestling show on TV and um, how week to week I think the storylines and the characters and the way they evolve uh, is better than any wrestling show out there. I think um, the way they've presented their show and their fictional universe that they've created um, is so unique and so unlike anything else that wrestling is doing that it feels like this gigantic breath of fresh air. It's the wrestling show I never knew I wanted, and I love that I have it, because I never would have booked a wrestling show like this. If you had asked me to create a wrestling show, I would have never gone in this direction. I would have gone for, you know, super realistic, happening in real time, sports coverage type of format. Kind of like, kind of like 98 WWF in a way, where the show is presented in a way where it it felt like it was something that was happening in real time. Um, uh, obviously, a lot more old school, going back to the like NWA in the 1980s or something like that. I would have gone for more of a formatting of that type of uh, that type of style. But Lucha Underground goes the complete opposite, and they dedicate themselves to it so much, and it works so well that I can't fault it. I'm like, it, it's it's wonderful. I love it. It's exciting. It's fresh. It's fun to watch, the stories make sense, the characters are off the wall and crazy, but they're a lot of fun and they're believable, and that's really my main um, point against what Cornette said. Cornette said that Lucha Underground isn't believable at all, and it's, it, you know, it makes wrestling out to be phony and blah blah blah, all that other stuff, and my response to that, I think Lucha Underground's probably the most believable wrestling show out there today, or at least one of them. I mean, obviously there's New Japan, there's uh, Ring of Honor to a point, um, but Lucha Underground is very believable in its presentation because it dedicates itself so much to the universe, and the characters don't feel out of place, nothing, uh, I'm not sitting there questioning the motivations of the characters or um, why the storyline is moving in this direction or anything like that, and... Um, and the guys on the show sell it so well that I just kind of get sucked into the world and immersed in it, and that even though all this crazy shit is going on, and it is very cinematic, and it is very uh, over the top, I mean, Cornette even said in his rant that the production is top notch. I mean, he even said that. He said it looked like a, a John Ford Western or something produced by Martin Scorsese, but um, you know, they dedicate themselves to it so much that it works, and I just kind of get sucked into the universe, and I just accept all the craziness for what it is. And they don't do anything to betray that. Um, WWE, if you look at Raw and the way they handle things, they sort of try to be like an in-real-time sporting event, but then they do all that weird, awkward backstage stuff where everybody's reciting 
scripted dialogue that's clearly scripted and it sounds forced and it sounds like uh, you know they're trying to jam as much exposition into the dialogue as humanly possible so none of it sounds natural um, you know that type of stuff going on and it's not true in all cases in WWE but for the most part that's how it comes across and everybody stands awkwardly side to side so that everybody fits inside the frame um, it's really weird and it's very awkward and you know for a company that boasts top-notch production like the WWE does, their backstage stuff is horribly, horribly mishandled and just looks awkward. And yet Lucha Underground, through its its cinematic elements, the background music and the, the unique camera angles and the way they present their characters and the way the characters act and the way the stories are written, I just kind of buy everything, weirdness and all. I just kind of, I just lose, you know... Suspension of disbelief and just hang on to that like it's a, a security blanket or whatever and I just I'm just along for the ride uh, I compare it to something like Star Wars where nothing in Star Wars is realistic and I think maybe that's the word Jim should use. It's not realistic um, Lucha Underground isn't but it is believable in its own universe. I think I, I think it's very believable and Star Wars is kind of the same way lightsabers can can never exist uh, space battles in the way they're presented can never exist um, uh, the Force is bullshit, obviously, but it's presented in the world so well, and everything in the world has such an organic, lived-in look to it that it, it feels believable. You get sucked into the world, and uh, the, the, the audience is just along for the ride, and that's how I feel whenever I watch Lucha Underground. And at the end of the day, um, wrestling is all about creating characters and stories, pitting characters against each other, and then eventually building to a climactic battle. Lucha Underground does that better than anybody. And at the end of the day, I care about the matches. I want to see how they end. And I care about the matches, the climaxes, and who wins and loses. And that's what matters most. And I think Lucha Underground handles that perfectly. Um, you know, and again, their style is uniquely theirs. Uh, there's other ways to do a wrestling show. I like NXT a lot. I've made that point perfectly clear. I like New Japan. Um, I enjoy Ring of Honor uh, whenever I get a chance to watch it, which hasn't I haven't watched it lately. But um, there are other ways to do wrestling shows. I don't want, you know, wrestling, it is an art form, and there shouldn't be one absolute way of doing any kind of art form there should be free range for creativity and thinking outside the box once in a while because that's how you evolve as an art form if you try new things try different things and if you fail you fail but at least you tried it and uh then you know you know future promoters can say that that didn't work and they know not to do it but uh although it begs the question why did raw go to three hours when they have they own the footage from nitro which sank like a rock when they went to three hours and yet they turned around and did the same fucking thing i was like whatever uh never mind uh <laughs> just they, god fucking they, they make me angry um but in any case, that's my defense of Lucha Underground. I, I disagree with Jim. I don't hate Jim Cornette. I didn't want to come on here and say, fuck that guy. He can go fuck himself and die in a fire or whatever the fuck crazy shit. He might say the same thing about me if he ever saw this. I don't know. I, I doubt he'll ever see it, but uh, it doesn't really matter. Um, I, just, uh, I love Lucha Underground. I just want to make sure uh, my voice was heard. And people seem to be interested in me responding to Jim Cornette. And, and like I said, I was not surprised at all when I read what he said. I, I knew exactly... What, and when I saw the headline, I knew exactly what Cornette was going to say. I was like, yeah, yeah, this, this, this sounds exactly like what I would expect out of Jim Cornette. But, you know, it's, uh, um, I don't expect everybody in the wrestling business or in the wrestling fandom to agree with me 100%. So it's, it's completely fine. It's fine. Uh, there, there are bigger things uh, worth getting upset over in this day and age. But, uh, yeah, that was the main topic I wanted to cover today. Um, Another thing I wanted to talk about, uh, Super Bowl. It's Super Bowl 50 this weekend, which is a huge milestone uh, for the Super Bowl event, the biggest football game of the year. Uh, you know, it's obviously a big deal, and like I said, 50 is a pretty big milestone. So uh, I, I think back in the Super Bowl and all the fond memories I have, all the not-so-fond memories I have, like the fucking Cowboys dynasty in the 90s or the fucking New England Patriots winning all the goddamn time, but... Uh, you know, I also, my team has won four Super Bowls, not to brag, but uh, those gave me a lot of fond memories as well. And some of the games like uh, Rams and Titans, I thought was a great game. Uh, uh, Panthers, even though Patriots won, I thought Panthers and Patriots was a great game. Um, Packers and Steelers from a few years ago was a great game. Uh, Cardinals and Steelers, uh, 43, that was a great game as well. A lot of the recent ones were actually very good. Um, so it's always fun. Uh, Super Bowl time, I always like to reminisce about... Uh, 
you know, the Super Bowl's history and remember all the good times and everything. And uh, it's even fun to look back and look at the Super Bowl games that precede me, uh, the ones that um, happened before I was born, like the classic Steelers-Cowboys games. Those games are, like, legendary to me, and I, I was not even, you know... I mean, those happened long before I was born, but I'm like, I look back at highlights of those games, like, man, that's like, th those are like legends. I mean, those, that's like, th those are the games that pretty much helped put the Super Bowl on the map and made it what it is today. Uh, Super Bowl three, that game is legendary for obvious reasons. And that was, I mean, that game is ar arguably the most significant game in the history of football, arguably. Um, and, uh, you know, Joe Namath, man, you gotta, <laughs> he, he backed it up, I'll give him that, uh, you know, what is it, what is it they say, it's not cocky if you can back it up, and Joe Namath certainly did that day, but, um, yeah, so, what do we look forward to here in Super Bowl 50? Well, we've got Peyton Manning and the Denver Broncos, uh, representing the AFC, and for the NFC, we have the Carolina Panthers with Cam Newton at quarterback, uh, trying to win the first Super Bowl in franchise history for them. Um, now, how do I think the game is going to go? Well, I remember what happened two years ago when the Broncos were in the Super Bowl, and it wasn't pretty at all. I I've never seen a Super Bowl be over after the first play from scrimmage. That game was, from the first snap, you knew it was over. I'm like, well, Seahawks are going to win this. I'm like, this, <laughs> it was like, it was fucking over right from the start. Um, and it pretty much turned out that way. So, um... Uh, hopefully the game isn't as bad as that one. That said, if I had to make a prediction in this game, I would pick uh, the Carolina Panthers to win it, I think. Uh, and what it comes down to is that uh, both teams, I think, have a great defense, especially the Broncos. The way they played against the New England Patriots in the championship game was unreal. That was an amazing performance from uh, of all game long. Amazing performance. Um all the way down to the last play where they uh, broke up the two-point conversion to tie the game. I mean, they just they played out of their skulls in that game. That was one of the all-time great defensive performances. Um, you know, and Carolina also has a great defense. Uh, they tend to score a lot on defense as well, and they're very, very tough uh, to move the ball against. So you got two great defenses. The real weak link here is on offense, where I think the Carolina Panthers have a much better offense than the Denver Broncos do at this point. I hate to say that about an offense led by Peyton Manning, but um, they they have not looked good throughout the playoffs. I, they've looked very unimpressive. Um, the game against New England should have been over five minutes before it was. The defense kept giving them opportunity after opportunity after opportunity to put the game away, and their offense just could not put the game away, could not move the ball and, you know, move the chains to uh, put the game away, and the defense ultimately had to win the game for them. Because um, you you can only stop an offense led by Tom Brady so many times. I mean, I, I, I again, uh, highlighting how impressive uh, Denver Broncos' uh, defensive effort was, but um, I just have no faith that their offense can move the ball against Carolina's defense, and that's what it comes down to. I think, uh, I think Cam and... Uh, the Panthers' offense might struggle against Denver's defense, but I think they're going to have more success against Denver's defense than the Broncos are against Carolina's defense, and that's just how I see it. Um, who am I rooting for? Um, I mean, I could go either way on this one. I, I think Cam Newton, Newton is charismatic as fuck. I just I love that kid. He's hysterical. I just he's so infectious. He's so like happy to be there and happy to be playing. And it's just some people will interpret that as ego to egotism, but I look at him. It's like oh, he's just having fun. I just I think he's a fun guy. I kind of like watching him. And he's he like I said, he's so infectious. It's hard not to get sucked into it and enjoy the game right along with him. Um, especially on a season where the Panthers went for what was it, fifteen and one. And went all the way through the playoffs. I mean, they played great all season long, and <coughs> you know, and they, they've they've looked terrific. And um, it's easy for me to believe that they're probably gonna they're probably gonna win this game if I had to bet. And I wouldn't have a problem with it. You know, it's the first time this team would win the Super Bowl, um, and that's I'm totally fine with that. Some people would think that just because I'm a Giants fan, I'd be rooting against Carolina because of how the Giants Carolina game earlier in the season went. Um, Yes, uh, you know, I mean, personally, I didn't watch that game. Uh, I was actually at the movie seeing Star Wars when that game happened, and when I saw the final score, I was like, oh, we only lost by three. Great. Giants are improving because we, we suck this season. But, um, you know, when I saw all the stuff that happened between Odell and uh, and all, all that shit that went down, I was like, oh, God, that got chippy, to say the least. I'm shocked there weren't injections involved in that game, but... 
Um, you know, to me, there was nothing to really get mad about. It was just kind of like, look, we lost to a, an unbeaten team. That's uh, and actually, the real uh, that game and the Seattle playoff game from a couple weeks ago. Um, the only like dents in the Carolina armor that I see is that they have a tendency to get lax when they get a big lead. Because um, they were leading the Giants by like 32 points, I think, at one point. And the Giants came back and tied the game. Ultimately, Carolina won, but um, Carolina got a little lax there. Uh, Seattle, they were dominating Seattle. And then at the end of the game, Seattle got within a touchdown. And could have easily, you know, come back and tied the game. And then, you know, who knows what would have happened. So, um... They do have a tendency to get lax when they get a big league and that uh, a big lead, and that's something to look look for in case that happens here. Um, but other than that, I just don't I just don't see Carolina losing this game. Uh, now on the Denver Broncos side, um, you know Peyton Manning. It looks like this is if I had to bet, this is probably going to be his last game. At the very least, I imagine it's his last chance uh, to win another Super Bowl. So um, if he wins, and if the Denver Broncos win, it'll be very emotional. Uh, Peyton Manning is a quarterback I've always respected and always uh, thought very highly of. Um, obviously, his brother is my quarterback, so he's kind of like family to me. Um, so, uh, yeah, if they win, if the Broncos win, I won't have any problem with it. And it would be kind of nice if Peyton you know, was able to win one last Super Bowl before he retired. But I'm not going to hope for it. I think Carolina's going to take this. But, again, I've been wrong before, so who knows. But um, that is all I have for you today. I uh, hope you all enjoyed my Lucha Underground talk and my Super Bowl talk and me admitting to my boo-boos. But, um, yeah, my next video is going to be the very first video in my WrestleMania Best to Worst series. It's going to be covering opening matches. Um, I'm actually doing the prep work on the video right now. I'm actually going back and watching all the opening matches from WrestleMania's history, and I'm actually going to have to do that for all the lists that I make, which is uh, probably going to make the process a little bit more involved than I originally planned. But that's one of the benefits of having the WWE Network is that I can pretty much pull up any WrestleMania I want and watch... Uh, Watch it any time I want, so it shouldn't be too difficult. But that video should be up either Friday or Saturday, so be on the lookout for that. But until then, uh, y'all have a great week, and I will see you all later.